Hi, I'm Damien from Codefights. In this video, we are going to reverse the direction of a linked list. Reversing a linked list is a very common task in technical interviews, so you need to be prepared. We are modeling our linked list by these node objects, where each node stores a value and a next pointer to the next node in the list. The last node in the list points to null, to indicate that we have reached the end of the list. We access the linked list by having access to a head pointer at the beginning of the list. We want to apply a function that does two things. It reverses the direction of the arrows, that is, it changes the structure, and it returns a pointer to the new beginning of the list. Here we see that all the nodes stayed in place in memory, but only the direction of the arrows changed. We might have a lot of different references to our linked list before we reverse it. If we call reverse head1, we might update head1, but all our other references are stuck at the end of our linked list. To get around this, you could make a linked list class, or a sentinel head, that external references could point to, which contains the pointer to the beginning of the linked list. Then we can safely update this reference without breaking any external references. To help us focus on just the core algorithm, we're going to just use the simple version of the linked list. Linked lists are designed to be easy to traverse in the forward direction, but once a node is passed, there's no way of going back. If reversing the order was something you needed to do often, then a linked list is a poor choice of data structure. In technical interviews, these questions are asked to assess how well you can perform tricky manipulations. We will show two different approaches to reversing a linked list, a recursive one and an iterative one. For the recursive function, we note that the nodes in the red box are a linked list. The pointer to the first node in this case is head.next. If we had a reverse function, we could call it on head.next to get the new head at the end of the linked list. Starting here, we can traverse the list one node at a time until we reach this node, which goes to null. Let's call this node tail node for now. Once we finish reversing the linked list, new head is what we ultimately want to return. We have two things we want to do now. Make tail node's next pointer point back to head, and make head's next pointer point to null, to indicate it's the end of the new list. So tail node.next points to head, and head.next points to none. We can eliminate the reference to tail node, because tail node is just the node head.next points to. Tail node.next is the same as the more cryptic looking head.next.next. Now we have to deal with the base cases. We see that the reversing step requires access to head.next and head.next.next. This is a problem if head is null, that is, the list has no elements, or if head.next is null, that is, there's only one element. In the case of zero or one elements, the reversed linked list is the same as the original linked list, so we should just return head back again. The nice thing about the recursive approach is that we only had to pay attention to how to reverse the direction of the first arrow. The recursive calls kept the number of pointers we had to keep track of to a minimum. The downside is the recursive call is made at the beginning of the function. So when we call reverse the first time, we immediately enter the next recursive call, which then immediately enters the next one, and so on until we reach the base case. This is expensive on memory, because we have to store the values of all the local variables for each call of the function before returning. An iterative approach to this problem doesn't have these limitations and executes just as fast as the recursive approach. As before, if the list only has zero or one elements in it, reversing it doesn't change anything, so we can just return the original head. The iterative approach works reversing the list one node at a time, starting at the original head node. We keep two pointers, current, which is the head of the forward-facing list, and already reversed, the head of the reversed portion of the list. We can see that at an intermediate step in the process, the already reversed and current nodes are nodes that were adjacent in the original list. This dotted line, which I call the frontier, separates the reversed part of the list from the forward part of the list. At each iteration, we want to advance the frontier one step. Once we change current's next pointer to point backward, we lose access to the rest of the list. Therefore, we create store pointer to the next value in the forward list to remember this position. Once we have saved this new node, we can swap the direction of current.next. Once we've done that, the frontier between the reversed and forward lists has advanced one location. Now we just have to make current point to the head of the forward list and already reversed point to the head of the reversed list. When do we stop? When current reaches none and already reversed is then the head of the linked list, which we then return. The last thing we have to do is set up our pointers. We start by setting already reversed and current to the first two nodes in the linked list. We don't have a frontier all the pointers are pointing in the forward direction. By making already reversed's next pointer point to null, we establish the frontier. And by doing so, we establish already reversed as the head of the reversed list and current as the head of the forward list. You've just learned two different ways of reversing a linked list that you could use in a technical interview. Like us below, and be sure to subscribe to the Codefights YouTube channel